I'd like to uh, turn this over to Holly Menninger. She is uh, the new coordinator of the New York State Invasive Species Research Institute that's uh, under contract with uh, this agency. And um, that contract is very close to execution. In the next um, few weeks, it will likely be finalized. So um, here you go, Holly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. Um, hello, everybody. It's um, nice to uh, be joining you today and talking with you a little bit about um, what we've been up to for the last three months at the Invasive Species Research Institute. Oops, let's see. How do I make this go forward? Hmm. Hang on a second. Okay, there we go. Um, so just briefly, I'd like to give you an overview of where I'm headed during the presentation today. And feel free to jump in with questions at, at any time. Um, I'd just like to start with um, first providing a brief history of, about the Institute, um, giving you an overview of the missions and objectives of the Institute, and then really diving in to um, the more meat of the presentation, where, I see, where I'll explain how I see the Institute fitting into New York's invasive species landscape, um, providing you with some insights on New York's research capacity in invasive species, and then how this can support other invasive species activities and organizations across the state. Um, and finally, I'll leave you with a little bit of teaser of what's coming soon and hopefully provide some time for discussion and questions. So briefly, um, Leslie mentioned that we were under contract um, with TEC, but the, the institute, the idea of the institute first came about in the Invasive Species Task Force. It was recommendation number eight, if anybody's counting, um, to establish a center for invasive species research that would really serve um, serve as an independent organization to help coordinate the research and expertise that's curr currently scattered across the region and the state with the idea of improving invasive species management. Um, so um, I'm housed here in the Department of Natural Resources at Cornell, but I just wanted to reiterate that um, we see the Invasive Species Research Institute as a statewide institute, um, and that's part of the reason why I'm on this call here today. I started um, as coordinator back in June 2000, um, this past June. I came from um, the American Institute of Biological Sciences, a nonprofit professional society in Washington, D.C., prior to, to joining the Institute. I'd also like to let you all know that um, we do our, we're in the process of putting together um, an advisory board to really help us um, guide our activities, um, help frame our budget, and really um, act as a, as a brain trust as we're moving forward. Um, we're hoping to draw um, from a broad spectrum of, of expertise, so folks in academia, in state and federal government, um, as well as a variety of stakeholders. And we're hoping to get um, invitations for those advisory board members out, hopefully by the end of the week. So that will be coming together soon. <laughs> OK. So the big mission of the Research Institute is to improve the scientific understanding and statewide coordination of invasive species research and management. How will we do this? One, by co coordinating and prioritizing the needs for and funding of invasive species research, communicating the progress and outcomes of this ongoing research, and three, by facilitating collaboration among academic, government, and private sectors with the goal of improving um, the response to and management of invasive species. So um, when I arrived in June, my first task was really to understand New York's invasive species landscape. I'm not originally from New York. I grew up in Ohio and spent the previous eight years in the Washington, D.C. area. And I really wanted to focus on what contribution the Research Institute can make to protecting New York's natural landscapes, as well as its environmental and agricultural resources, protecting them from invasive species. This also meant um, understanding how the Research Institute would fit into the invasive species or policies and program framework and landscape established by the state. Um, so I'm sure you've all seen some variation of this organizational chart before. Um, I think Steve Sanford has provided this. So um, talking to folks in each sort of pieces of this, this big invasive species pie, particularly the Office of Invasive Species Coordination, the Invasive Species Council, I'm looking forward to interacting with the new advisory committee. Um, I've been working with um, Chuck O'Neill on the education and outreach component, as well as the information clearinghouse, touching base with the PRISMs, as well as um, Meg Wilkinson and her group on the mapping efforts, really trying to find areas of overlap and collaboration among these different groups to figure out how we can all work together. Additionally, I've, I've also thought a little bit, or a lot, I guess, about how um, New York's invasive species landscape really fits into the, the national landscape as a whole. Um, no one's ever really done 
a, a state research institute before, so that's a really exciting opportunity. And I've been reaching out to groups like the National Invasive Species Council, program leaders, and a number of federal agencies um, talking about the work that we're doing here, um, as well as attending sort of national scientific meetings. So I just went to the Ecological Society of America meeting back in August, um, and I'll be attending the Natural Areas Management meeting um, in Nashville here in a couple weeks. Probably the most exciting thing that I've done um, so far is really spending time to um, explore, identify, reach out to, and catalog the extensive research that's happening in invasive species across New York State. And this is just a, a map with a few, <laughs> a few little dots um, of folks that I've been able to contact either in person, um, by phone, or, or by email. And I've joked to a lot of people that my first few months here on the job has been a lot like um, internet dating, <laughs> where I identify people with common interests. Um, online for folks, researchers who have a stated interest in invasive species, drop them an email, say, hey, can we talk? Um, and I really learned a lot about some of the great work that's happening here in the state. I could probably spend hours talking to you about um, what I've learned, um, but I, I think that it's probably easier to represent sort of the, that extensive research capacity using a word cloud. I'm not sure if folks have seen these before. Basically, I took keywords from all of the research that I've learned, um, plugged it into this little program, and the size of the words actually gives you an indication of um, sort of how frequent or how common those keywords are. And as you'll see, um, there's a great breadth in research happening in invasive species, and it spans from single species um, focus to whole ecosystems. Um, it spans from sort of basic um, ecological theory and modeling to some real specific um, management actions as well as monitoring and detection evaluation. Um, the work uh, that, that's being done here occurs in natural areas as well as managed agricultural landscapes. What I'm doing with this information right now is putting it into and creating an expert database that we'll be putting online so that uh, researchers can identify potential collaborators, but also that um, you folks with the PRISMs and anyone, general public, can identify people with, um, with specific interests that match theirs in invasive species. I think the, the real challenge, though, um, sort of moving forward will be how do we integrate our understanding of the invasion process and the impacts of invasive species into real um, meaningful management actions. And then how can we frame those within a larger ecosystem or landscape level context? And I've been working again um, sort of in coordination with all these scientists I've met to really figure out what are the big research questions for um, the integration of invasive species research and management as well as looking for case studies that, that demonstrate um, this coordinated approach for research and management. Every time I have a conversation with a scientist or researcher, I always end the, the conversation with, uh, what can the Invasive Species Research Institute do for you? What do you need? And probably the two most common things that I hear um, are that the researchers are looking for opportunities for collaboration. Um, Research is becoming more of an interdisciplinary endeavor and, and requiring sort of expertise from lots of different fields. So folks are always looking for collaboration, particularly faculty members and scientists at small colleges and institutions who may not have access to um, certain types of equipment, um, field sites, et cetera. Additionally, I hear from scientists that they have a real desire to see their work um, used in an applied context. And so they're looking for, um, for potential collaborators and partners in the management community to put their research into action. But in many cases, a lot of those folks don't have an idea about how to go about doing that. So I see the Research Institute playing a real role there um, in facilitating that collaboration and building partnerships. And we are in the process of building our website, so that address that you see there won't actually take you anywhere. Uh, it's it's behind sort of a password protected wall because we haven't officially launched it yet. But we're hoping to provide some online tools to facilitate this collaboration among the research community itself as well as between the research and management community. Additionally, you'll start to see some regular communications, um, a newsletter hopefully electronically coming out um, from our from the institute here, and we'll be uh, um, organizing a number of workshops and conferences, again with the idea of bringing together researchers and management professionals. Another thing I hear a lot from the scientific community are concerns about research funding. Uh, research is a very expensive endeavor. Um, it's becoming increasingly more difficult um, to access um, 
competitive funds because um, everybody's looking for money to 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 fund their work and particularly applied work. So uh, what I've been doing recently is talking to program leaders at a number of different federal agencies who who fund invasive species research at extramural institutions. That means outside of the government, um, at universities, private organizations, colleges, um, with the idea of taking a comprehensive look at what's been funded in the past, um, what's currently being funded now, and potentially making recommendations so that organizations like DEC who are looking to fund invasive species research can have a, a good idea about where they should prioritize their efforts, what, what gaps may be existing in the current research funding structure, um, and how can New York play a role in actually um, closing some of those gaps. Additionally, we'll take information about current funding opportunities and create a, another sort of searchable database right there um, on the front page of our website so that folks are, who are looking for opportunities to do research can um, learn more about those requests for proposals. Um, just as important I see as the Research Institute sort of supporting scientists, I think that the scientists have a, have a real obligation to support the state. and so. Um, We've been working, I've been working closely with um, the folks in the Office of Invasive Species Coordination to help um, with any requests for information about particular invasive species. So I provided some, some literature on snakehead fish. But also we'll be working with them closely to help develop uh, research priorities um, and funding priorities for invasive species work in, in the future. Cable. Additionally, I have a very close relationship with uh, Cooperative Extension. I've been working closely with, with Chuck O'Neill. We've been uh, working together to sort of make sure that our websites are coordinated. Um, so because we think that a lot of the information that scientists are producing will be um, will be very useful for the general public. Additionally, I've been um, working with um, not just Chuck, but another colleague here in the Department of Natural Resources to help um, develop agendas for two upcoming um, extension programs that I think will be of, of great interest to this audience. And I wanted to alert you to those, and I'll provide information shortly about um, with the URLs for how you can register for those. But one, um, on October 30th, we'll be hosting an invasive um, non-native forest pest conference with a special focus on um, emerald ash borer, hemlock woolly adelgid, and Asian longhorn beetle. And I'll be ho uh, here in Ithaca at the Ramada Inn. We're bringing together um, a number of scientists and sort of state agency professionals to talk about, uh, sort of give a historical overview of forest pests, but also um, discussing sort of current status and ecological impacts. Um, so that will be a great program. And then, as I'm sure most of you have received in the email from Chuck, that as part of the agricultural and service for Cornell Cooperative Extension, we're offering a very specific invasive species track. Uh, that will take place on November 11th through the 13th. The first day will be sort of a general overview. The second day will provide um, more of a uh, focus on the impacts of, of a few case studies of invasive species and what resources are available um, and what has been the state response to those species. And then the third day, which um, there'll be, the program is going to be focusing more on cooperative extension and, and outreach efforts. What can you do in your community? And I think that will be something of great interest to the PRISM crowd. Finally, um, I've been having conversations um, with some folks, some of you folks, um, about how the Research Institute can help support your efforts. So in addition to the PRISMs, I've talked a bit with Meg and their mapping efforts and been in conversation with how the, the sciences and invasive species can help inform our rapid response efforts. Just as a, a, a final teaser, um, I encourage you all soon, I will send out an email. We'll be launching our, our website. And that website, there's no uh, www. It's just straight up New York Invasive, or straight up nyisri.org. That will be coming soon with lots of great features. Um, and again, those two upcoming um, extension events. First, on October 30th is the Forest Pest Conference, a one-day thing. Um, the registration fee for that is $30. And then secondly, the Invasive Species and in Service, which will be no, November 11th through 13th. Um, if for the full three-day program, I believe it's 100 bucks, but $40 a day if you just want to do one day or the other. I'll leave that up there a minute in case folks need to write, write that down. Okay, we can go to that, and I'll make sure I'll send those links to Leslie and she can distribute to the PRISM crowd as well. Um, and finally, the last thing I'd like to do is, you know, I've told you about, a bit about the conversations that I've been having with the scientific community and with sort of folks um, who are involved in the state 
some of the state level effort, but I'd really like to throw um, some questions at you to, to see from your perspective as, as managers and, and stakeholders in this invasive species effort, what do you see are the greatest, most important contributions the Research Institute can make? Um, so um, I I'd, I'd throw that to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If, if you're not uh, comfortable or interested, I guess, in talking on the phone, um, my email address and phone number there, I would love to hear from hear more from you um, and, and get some feedback from you. <laughs> 